Jan, tell me, tell me about your gypsy moth and, and why you're so excited about having purchased it recently. Way back, years and years before I was born, Dad bought it in 1934. He'd been over in the RAF for a while and decided that <clears throat> what was in front of him wasn't quite for him, so um, he bought a, this particular aeroplane and flew it to Sydney. And, <clears throat> and then it had been through various owners in New Zealand after the war and and then a chap Lee Middleton bought it and actually had it for about 40 years 30, and he rebuilt it over a 30 year period and um, you know we've seen it around a little bit not much and um, finally 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 he agreed to sell it to us so it's um, pretty amazing. So did you know that it was always still around sort of somewhere in the background or did it pop out of the woodwork at some point and sort of that was when you realised that it was still a, an airworthy aircraft? I came back from England in 1984 and I'd been over there for about seven years. When I came back I got right into Tiger Moss and um, I then started taking an interest in finding where the aeroplane was and I tracked it down and um, <clears throat> it was pretty much actually rebuilt then but it took an awful long time to finish it, you know, 90% done and 90% to go. So when your father um, flew it out um, to Australia, uh, was that immediately after the war? Or no, before the war. Before, oh, before the war? <clears throat> yeah, 1934. Oh, okay. Um, I shipped it from Sydney to Auckland and then flew it down to Bridge Power where he, he'd been flying bef before he went to England. And, um, and then he just flew it around until war broke out and then all the likely young lads, of course, signed up and then the government impressed it. But thankfully it was never used for training because it was just that wee bit different from tigers and the reason I built the tiger is very obvious when you fly a gypsy. I mean it would be impossible really for instructors and such like. Alright, so tell me about that. I mean you've obviously got a, a fair amount of tiger time. So yeah, what, what, are, the, what are the flying qualities? How do they differ between the, the tiger and the gypsy? Well, in essence, they're really, really similar. I mean, <clears throat> anyone who can fly one can easily fly the other. But <clears throat> the gypsy's a wee bit more docile. Um, you, you land at a slower speed. If you land at a tiger speed, it'll just float on. Um, <clears throat> the airspeed indicator doesn't work all that well, so you just have to gauge that for yourself. Well, that's about it, really. It's, it's a lesser horsepower, and it probably goes about the same speed at the same revs, I guess. It's certainly a little different to get into from the Tiger. A bit more difficult, you mean? Uh, yes, 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 with the top wing being directly above the front seat, which I must say I've only ever been in once. You, you can imagine an instructor with all his full kit and parachute getting in there and just, oh, just a nightmare. And of course the back seat doesn't have a door, so you have to get, get in the back seat, a bit like getting on a horse or something similar. You have to be a wee bit agile.